a lot of smart home devices are powered by batteries. And as you add more and more sensors, for example, to better automate your house, sooner or later you're going to realise that it's better to replace these batteries before they run out. Unless, of course, you particularly want to walk into a dark room and wonder why the actual lights don't turn on. Now what Thomas Lovin has done is to create a very useful plugin for Home Assistant called Auto Entities. And one of the things that you can use this for is to actually display entities on your dashboard when the battery level has dropped too low. You can of course use it for other things and I'm actually using it to track which lights are turned on. But how do you install Auto Entities and how do you configure it? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video because that's what we'll be going over. Now, like most additional software that's available for Home Assistant, Auto Entities is actually available on GitHub. So what you can do is you can come to this actual page here. Now, I will leave a link for it in the description. And you can go through this manual install process if you want. Click on that and it, it goes through the details of how to actually install it. But it is much easier to actually use hacks to do this. Aside from making the installation easier, you also get the benefit that if there's an update, Hacks will tell you about it, and then you can update the actual installation that you've already got. Now, if you're not already familiar with how to install Hacks, I do have another video that shows you how to do that. Now, assuming that you've got Hacks installed, in order to install Auto Entities, what we need to do is to click on Hacks over here in the left-hand pane, and then, we'll then select Front End, and then click on Explore and Download Repositories. Now, in this field here, you can filter out the actual list that it knows of, but at the moment, at least, Auto Entities is in plain view, so we'll click on that. And then you get the output for more details about how to actually configure and set this up, but what we want to do is to click on Download. We do get options to use beta versions, change the version uh, that would download, for instance, but we'll just go with the, the latest version. There's some more information about additional work that you need to do to actually configure this. But for now, we just want to actually get the software installed. So we're going to click on download. So what that'll do is it will go out to GitHub and download the actual files. So now that that's done, it's come back and says that it needs to reload the web browser to be able to use this. So we're going to click on reload. And then Home Assistant does then ask you to log back in again. So we're going to log back in. And if you go back to Hacks, go back to Front End, you can see we've now got Auto Entities installed. So that at least gets the initial installation process done. Now, plugins like Auto Entities allow you to customize your own dashboards. And out of the box, what you've got is really more of an admin dashboard. This one here, the overview one, is really just a collection of all the devices and all the entities that Home Assistant knows about. So the idea is you leave this one to the actual system and you create your own dashboards. So in which case, what we need to do is go to settings, then go to dashboards, then we'll click add dashboard. You can give this one a name. So I'm going to call this one demo dashboard, for example. You can select from a, a list of icons down here, whatever it is you want to particularly pick. There's a, there's a, like a really lot of them. Um, what I'm going to just look for is, for the sake of argument, let's go with uh, an alert. We don't want to set this for admin only use, but I do want it to go into the sidebar, so I don't need to change anything else. I'm just going to click on the create button. And then what we've now got is our demo dashboard over here. So what you can now do is click on that. Although at the moment in time, it just looks like the normal overview dashboard. Now, in order to be able to use plugins like Auto Entities, we have to actually tell the Lovelace user interface about them. And to do that, you have to be in advanced mode. So down here in the left hand corner, if you select your port rate, scroll down and make sure where it says advanced mode, that this is set to enabled. If you then come back to settings and then go to dashboards, We've now got a menu option up here in the top right corner. So if you select that and then pick resources and then click on add resource, we need to put the URL in 
for our actual auto entities plugin. So I'm just going to copy and paste this, but I'll leave details about it in the description. And one thing I'll point out is this has changed from some of the earlier setups. So do bear in mind the earlier setup of this just used slash local slash auto entities dot js and that doesn't work anymore it's got to be this longer path anyway now that we've put the details in there we'll click on create and then that tells lovelace about this plugin now one thing you can actually check is if you go to hacks just make sure you're not seeing any warning message here now if you'd use that original setup process which had slash local slash auto entities Dot .js, you would have had an, an actual warning up here saying that, uh, that there was a problem that it hadn't been probably uh, integrated into Lovely. So that's just something to bear in mind in one way to actually test that there isn't a problem. Now, when you first create a dashboard, all you're really doing is actually cloning the overview dashboard. So if I click on demo dashboard, which is what we created earlier, and then click on overview, you'll see the two are identical. So in order for me to actually start customizing this though, I have to actually take control of this dashboard first. So we're gonna click on the menu option here and select edit dashboard. Now, one thing it does give you the option to actually do here is to start with an empty dashboard, which makes more sense really rather than deleting um, these cards that already exist. We just wanna start from scratch. So we'll enable that feature there and then click on take control. And we're now into edit mode, and that's what you'll get going forward. Once you've taken control, it just puts you into edit mode. And the idea is that you add cards with information that you want. So if I click on add card, it's got a series of different cards that you can pick. Now these are the built in ones, but if you scroll all the way down to here, this is our auto entities one. And this is the one that we want to use to actually be able to set up our auto entities cards. Now in this example, we're gonna be setting them a card which will show us devices where the actual battery level has dropped below a certain amount. So we're gonna click on custom auto entities. Now you can start putting information in here manually or what you can do is just click show code editor. I'm gonna delete the existing code and I'm gonna paste in an example that I got from one of the actual forums. And this was supplied by Brian Cook. And this is extremely useful I'm finding because by default, what it does is it only displays actual devices where the battery level has dropped below 10%. Now you can change this. So at the moment, for example, I've got a motion sensor where the battery is just, well, it's just flat basically. So it's, it's showing up here. The useful thing about auto entities is you don't have to actually complete the card and then see what it looks like. It is actually dynamic. So if I change this from say 10% to 60%, now my door sensor shows up because that battery levels 52%, but I'll put it back to 10% because that seems a, a conservative amount. We'll click on save and then we'll click on done. And now what I've got is a card where it'll only show entities where their actual battery level is less than or equal to 10%. So the good thing about that is it's a good way to warn you when your battery levels are actually running down rather than just getting a notification that you might easily forget, especially if you know where near to actually uh, actually replace that battery immediately. This is just going to stay there until I actually replace this battery. So I'm going to go off and do that and I'll see what it looks like then. Well, now that the battery's been replaced, we're no longer seeing it in our list here. And that's exactly the way you want it. In other words, we only want devices to appear if the battery level falls to 10% or lower. Now, if you want, you can actually remove the card entirely. So if you edit the dashboard and then edit the card, select the card tab, you can deselect this option, show if empty. We click on save and then done. You can see the card's completely gone. Now, personally, I prefer to leave that there as a placeholder, but it's entirely up to you. One thing I'm going to point out, though, is that there does seem to be a bit of a disconnect going on here. Uh, if I go back into edit this card. We're in the visual editor. Now, if I put in a threshold of less than or equal to 100%, I'm not seeing anything going on here. And I don't even get a, an actual save option. If I go over to the code editor and change it there, you see automatically I'm starting to see 
both batteries because they're both either less than or equal to 100 percent and if i save that then click on done i'm seeing both of them so let's see i'm not quite sure what's going on there but maybe it's a case of if you're going to be doing all your work within code maybe it's better to just to stick to, to using the actual uh, code editor but either way that's a very useful card and a good way to be able to track the actual battery levels on your actual smart home devices. Now there are other things that you can use auto entities for. And if you go over to the GitHub website, you'll find some interesting examples there. So for instance, I'm using this one in a card which displays lights that are turned on. Now, the reason I find this one useful is because I've got groups of lights. So an actual command is sent to the group to turn the lights off. Now, on rare occasions, a light actually might be left on. So by having this card, it's very easy for me to actually spot if there's a light that's on that really should have been turned off, in which case I can then turn that off remotely. But there are other interesting examples that you can find here. Although if you do know of any useful examples that you're using, please share those in the comments section below. Well, thanks for making it to the end of this video. I really do hope you found it useful. If so, then do click the like button and share as that'll help get the video out to more people who might find it useful as well. If you've got any comments or suggestions, please post those in the comments section below. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more content like this, then yes, do subscribe. Just remember to set the bell icon to actually send you notifications when new content gets released. Although I also post to Twitter as well as Facebook. If you'd like to help the channel and support it, you can actually make contributions through PayPal and buy me a coffee. I've also got links to Patreon and there's also the joint membership option for YouTube itself. Patreon and YouTube members do have the option to actually benefit from early access as well. But above all, many thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.